My name is Eunice Long. I'm 72 years of age, and uh, I arrived with my family from Ireland into Dewsbury Railway Station in, on the 1st of July, 1966. Actually, I can remember that day so clearly. I was 15. Um, I was here with, there's, I've got four sisters and a brother and my mum. My father had moved the year earlier for work and uh, I can even remember what I was wearing. And I can remember it was a hound's tooth, green and cream hound's tooth. And it actually would be very fashionable today. <laughs> oh, and also a pair of high heels, my first ever high heels, uh, black and red patent, which my mother thought was totally unsuitable. They were slightly big for me, but 15, I was determined. I was grown up, I was determined to wear those high heels. <laughs> that day is really, really clear in my mind. And every time I pass Dewsbury Station and use it, it always brings me back to that day when I was 15 and arriving here. It was a big deal moving from Ireland, um, to, from quite a rural seaside community, into a very industrialised um, area. But uh, very exciting, um, a whole new world and opportunities opening up for us. Um, I must admit initially though, for the first year, I didn't actually take to the place because we were far too far from the sea. But uh, my first job as an office junior in um, a knitting wool company, I actually fell in love with the mills, with the industry that was around. I worked in the offices, but I liked nothing better then going into the mills and seeing all the wool being produced and the carpets and the knitting yarns and that's so I really, really did come to love the area. There were opportunities, um, even without a university education. I was very fortunate I got to train with British Coal, spent 20 years in the coal industry, did my training with British Coal, became a fuel technologist and ended up being um, director and general manager of a, big, of a big energy company. So, so I had great opportunities uh, here in England and in Yorkshire, which I'm really very, very grateful for. But when I retired, I had some time on my hands. So I went and did my training with uh, the RHS at Harlow Carr and did my horticultural diploma. And this is why, I, again, I have something to give to Dewsbury um, train station because we're going to be redoing all the beds in the front, making far more sustainable planting and just making the place nicer, you know, and just giving something back because I'll never forget that day arriving here, you know, and Dewsbury has played a great big part in my life. Hi, I'm Ikra. Um, I'm a designer, dressmaker, textile artist and tutor. I'm 26 and I'm from Batley. So um, my, dad, my granddad came in the 60s. Um, he came to work and to like earn money for a family who was still living back home in Pakistan. So my family's from Pakistan, Mirpur Azad Kashmir. Um, but when he came here, he used to work as a shoemaker um, and he worked with car parts as well. And also um, he used to wash wools and make yarns out of them. 
So he was already in the textile industry at that time. Um, and for them, coming here was a bit dif difficult because um, there was a language barrier. They didn't really understand English and my granddad wasn't, obviously he hadn't studied, uh, barely studied anything back home. Um, so when he came here, he, was just, he just relied on other people, other friends that come with him. A few years later, the, the children came and the, his, uh, my grandma and everybody came. My, my auntie came when she was 14 years old um, and she came with her mother and her the younger siblings. So, and, and she started to do some studying, but because of the language barrier that she had, she only did two years and she studied um, art and design at the Batley School of Art, which was actually in Batley at that time. So I've kind of gone into her foot, footsteps really, which I, which honestly is like, it's kind of, um, I'm, I'm really grateful that I'm able to follow in her footsteps and go into the arts. My family is definitely, uh, it has been key through my, um, heritage and uh, my aspirations. Like a lot of my female relatives are the ones that have given me inspiration for what I do in the textile industry. And again, with my granddad as well, washing wools, I would have never have thought, and going in the factories and making yarns. So it all started off there. But it's definitely shaped me because I can always go back to her for advice. It's not just her, it's my mother and all the other female, I can go back to them and ask them a guidance, you know, how would I, how would I cut a dress, or how would I do this, or something like that. It's definitely shaped my my career. Yeah, so that, that, so that identity was, I think, for me, was like the whole the whole craft thing, the whole um, creating and making use of whatever you've got. So they, they would teach each other, they would learn from another. They'd learn from family back home and then bring it here, and then I've I've been taught and now I'm continuing to teach that. So that's just how it's progressed, really. So Jewsbury has become a home for us. I, I honestly couldn't um, go anywhere else. So was, um, I could have studied at Huddersfield University, I could have studied at Leeds University, I could have studied even further, but I decided to stay in Jewsbury College and do my degree there. So that shows that I'm proper home, I'm a home bird and I don't want to go out of my area. So I feel comfortable in, um, in Jewsbury. My name is um, Ilyas Hans and I'm 46 and live in Butley and I've been working in the train station for um, over 15 years now and my main job role is um, customer service supervisor, um, just looking after the station, um, selling tickets, helping um, the disabled people, visually impaired people, people who require any assistance around because Dewsbury is such a multicultural people. We we'll get so many different people from other ethnic backgrounds. So Asians people who are struggling to speak English. I do basically help them and basically translate for them and basically help them um, the best ticket that they want. The building itself is over 175 years old. And before all the time, I think the ticket office was underground and you can still see the part of the ticket office which has got arches on it. So we're in, a we're in a centre, so we can go different places. So for airport, you can go to Scarborough, you can go all the beaches, everything. So we're in the centre of the community. So we're the, basically the main station around all of Bartley, Dewsbury, Heppenwijk, and Clekeaton and all around surrounding areas. If you come from London or whatever, you see, you see everything over here. You see the um, all the sh town centre, city centre, and if you go a bit further on, you see all the greenery. You can go for loads of walks, and which you might not even get in other places. I think this is Yorkshire as it is, such a beautiful place to come. So you can just sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. Well, I'm 69. I'll be 70 this year. Um, I started work for British Rail in 1971 in Rotherham in South Yorkshire, where I grew up, that area. Uh, and moved through various jobs around the country and then on the continent. Um, and I came to Dewsbury because of the, the location of the job in 2002, February 2002. Uh, by train, of course, you know, as you'd expect. But I found Dewsbury's a, a convenient place to live. 
Um, I don't drive a car, I've never held a driving licence, so I'm dependent on public transport. And, one, and well, another criteria was direct trains to the airport. I've, my family is in Switzerland, so I need to get across there to see them from time to time. The station, as we know, is celebrating 175 years this year, which is quite an anniversary. I first went into the West Riding pub on the station in 1997, when I was still living in Switzerland. So that was another criteria for when I moved here, there must be a good pub close by, and I knew the West Riding was a good pub. So I met it my local when I got here, and it's been my local ever since. Um, it keeps winning uh, Pub of the Year awards, I keep presenting them. It's, uh, you know, and I, and I knew the late Mike Field who's to, who set it up, I knew Mike well, you know, and he, um, he had a vision and he, he realised it, you know, it's great. It's always been a community pub, yeah. Um, when the prices started to rise, a lot of the tea time drinkers who were lager drinkers moved elsewhere, which is a shame. Uh, but there's still a lot of regulars going there. I mean, I've, I know people that, that were drinking in there 20 years ago who are still drinking there 20 years later. You know, so, it, 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 it's the West has its uh, regular customers, of which it has a lot, and it has transient customers who drop off on the train, and they come from all over the country. You know, I'm, I was with a group of them in Nottingham, where are we now, Friday on Wednesday, and I came back via Grantham because there's a pub on the station there that I haven't been in. Then to Doncaster because there's a pub on the station there that I hadn't been in. And then came back to the West Riding. Um, it's, there's just something about it. You know, if you work for the railway, it's, um, it's attractive. It's attractive to have a pub, a pub on the station. It's important too. I like living in Dewsbury. I feel, feel okay here, feel well, feel well here. I'm a, I'm a Yorkshireman anyway. I'm from the West Riding, so. Um, so it's nice, I mean, it's a nice countryside around it, the town's okay. Um, when public transport works, you can get around on it. <laughs> My name's Stuart Hartley. Uh, I've always lived in Dewsbury, various parts of Dewsbury, but I never moved out. Uh, born in 1945, which makes me 77. And um, I have always taken an interest in Dewsbury. In fact, I do a lot of talks for local groups on social history, economic history of Dewsbury in the area. All that, all that time ago when they built in, uh, what was it, eight, uh, 1848, there was an underground passage under the track that was a link to the other side. And part of it is still there. Um, and Mike Field used to store the, the barrels of beer in that because it was cold. And if you look down the, the edge of the platform from the Leeds side, you can see all the windows in the edge of the platform that lead down a ramp to, to go across the railway line. And in those days, the second floor part of it was a railway workers club. The big house just across the road that the solicitor's office was the station master's house. And the big car park in front was really a shunting yard, it was full of railway track. 25, 30 years ago, Mike Field bought one of the buildings, or leased it, I'm not sure which, and he made it into the West Riding pub. And he started doing handcrafted beers and meals, and the meals took off, it was amazing. Um, he got a lady that had done something like a thousand meals a day at, at, I think it was Thomas Burnley's mill, to doing probably a hundred and she put on some super spreads. The lunchtime meals were outstanding and they the changed every day. The, it, it wasn't just a quick fix, they were really, really good. Um, and he had so many beers, you, you wouldn't be able to say well to somebody, well, if you go and get that one, because two weeks later it wouldn't be there, it'd be another one. Um, you got a lot of passing trade through there. People would just stop in on the way to somewhere else. And you, you saw and met a lot of people and. A friend of mine who was on, who helped organise this 150th anniversary, he, he was a councillor and he always used to go there at dinner time and he would talk to anybody. So he'd sit down and he'd just sit in one place and people had passed through but he would talk to them. If I want to describe Dewsbury train station in three words, I would say friendly, loads of heritage, and it's more um, all welcoming. So supportive, 
uh, feels at home and comforting? Um, convenient, well served uh, and brilliant. It really is hard to imagine Dewsbury without its town hall, but in 1860, this scene would look a little bit more like this. On the site of the town hall in the early 1880s, there was a florist, a shoeing forge and some cottages, also the Albion Hotel. Here we can see a close-up of the Albion Hotel. The town hall was officially opened on Tuesday the 17th of September 1889. Dewsbury train station opened in 1848 by the London and North Western Railway, previously known as Dewsbury Wellington Road. The station is still in use today. Dewsbury Central opened in 1874 and closed in 1964. However, there was a temporary building between 1874 until around 1880. The sign on the pillar reads, ring three times for Porter. Sadly, the entrance to the ticket office has been bricked up. Let's take a look inside. Here we can see the ticket office. Here is a close-up of the ticket office. This photo taken in 1978. Moving up to platform level. Here is platform level around 1910. In the centre of this photo, you can just see the steps that come up from the ticket office.
Huddersfield Station, which is here. Each of those little boxes is a train. Uh, that train is currently the um, 1106 Manchester Airport to York service. It's currently running approximately one minute late. <laughs> There are examples where uh, that I've been standing on a station and the train hasn't turned up, so I can, I can empathise with the customers. Heading to the seaside for fish and chips and a laugh. Just put my daughter on a train to London. Hope she gets there safely. Family doom and gloom. Get rid of it so I can start to have a good day. I'm too hot. I shouldn't have worn a jumper. Hello, how do you folks? Any tickets and passes from Huddersfield? Anyone joining from Huddersfield today? Hello. Fabulous, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Depends where you work, actually, as to what they call it. A train manager, conductor, guard. Um, I like to think of myself as a conductor, uh, and I do literally orchestrate the service. And I set the tone, I set the mood of the train as well. Driving through my life, seeing myself as a baby, a youngster, the highlights, the friends, the lost and gained, the smiles and the tears. I'm a famous author coming up with story ideas on the train to send them to a popular publisher in London. <laughs> Sun on my face, good book, nice cup of coffee. Qualities that you need for this job, definitely empathy, being able to understand where everyone's coming from and why people are feeling the way that they're feeling and definitely the gift of the gap, being able to convey the message to someone and get the, the point across and the information that they need across as well, even when they're very angry. Waiting to get a signal for my phone. Thank goodness the phone signal doesn't work. Peace at last. How full I am after the most meat eaten in one sitting. I hope my parking ticket isn't overdue. If it is, I'm screwed. During this job, I've had an awful lot of weird things to do with. I think one of the, the most things that we get to do with are people that are rather worse aware for drink. Uh, and usually we tend to over, over carry them. So they want to have got off at Leeds and we usually over carry them through to Manchester. I've had people asleep on the luggage racks. People amorous in toilets. It's certainly interesting on trains. I was meeting across a crowded train, sharing a brief moment with a complete stranger. Talking to strangers, getting to know aspects about their lives, yet then leaving and knowing that you'll probably never see that person again. What are we having for tea? How am I going to get everything done today? When will I meet him? The train journey that takes you to the one you love. 
There's nothing nicer than when you see a passenger waiting for a train because somebody special is arriving and they give them a nice big welcome when they arrive. But sometimes it's sad, people are going to live away and you get the tears as well as they're leaving. I would prefer to be working at a small station and <clears throat> because I know the local people here and I like to help within the communities. You have to be a people person and you can be shy, you have to be out on the platforms and present yourself to the people. Whatever happens that day, you have to deal with it. The manager's not based at this station, so you have to use your common sense. Sometimes you have to act very, very fast. But we do have some really nice days and we do have some lovely passengers. It's a beautiful day and aren't we lucky that our Victorian ancestors built this railway? I wish I could look out of the window of the train and not at my PC or whatever piece of work I'm cramming before my meeting. Is there a world out there? Work, government cuts to funding and the likelihood of redundancy, early retirement. I feel almost grief on a lonely station. train journey to see my friends. Normally would be excited, but tinged with sadness. We're all meeting to commemorate the anniversary of our friend's suicide last year. The show must go on. I actually, I look out the window and most of the time I'm awestruck that what an amazing view I've got. This is my office window. So when I look out the, tra the train, the views and the places that the trains take me to. And you, how can you get bored? Living in the middle of the countryside, watching trains pass by in the distance, settled beside a roaring fire and a sleepy dog. Staring out of the window, watching the hay fields and scenery, bringing back childhood memories. Cantering on a lovely horse, jumping over all the hedges we pass by. What would it be like to live on that farm we just passed? Train etiquette, the number one pet peeve for a lot of people, when people are listening to the music too loud. So you can listen to you, your music, you. Not everybody else, we don't want to hear it. Feet on seats, I have no problem with feet on seats. Take your shoes off, pop your feet on. I'm OK with that. Suitcases on seats while somebody's standing. The doors are opening and passengers are trying to get out, but passengers are trying to get in. People who speak too loud on the mobiles. You don't need to shout, they can hear you. <laughs> I get to meet all different characters on trains. I don't think there's much that would throw me off my guard anymore. I am an astronaut. The train is my fancy futuristic spaceship. Getting married, first dance. Getting a winner in the 345 at York. Getting home to feed my new kitten. Each train ride is a small community of people. You see lots of kindness every day. People giving up their seats, giving others life advice, directions, telling stories. People passing through each other's lives for a moment and then they're gone.
Leaving Northwards, the route to Dewsbury left the main line at Renthorpe Junction, just over a mile from Westgate Station, the line forming part of a triangular junction. A short distance from the junction were the remains of Alderthorpe Station, closed in 1954. And after a further mile and a half, the mineral branch from Old Roundwood Colliery joined the main line. After passing the summit at Shepherd Hill, the line dropped gradually through Flush Dyke on the approaches to the textile town of Osset. A mile from Osset was the abandoned track bed of the line to Shawcross Colliery, which left the main line immediately after the bridge. From Chickenley, the line began a steep descent towards the Dewsbury suburb of Earls Eaton, passing the goods yard and station which closed in 1953. Descending towards Dewsbury, the line passed the junction that gave access to the former Great Northern Railway's goods depot, before plunging into the final tunnel and the arrival at Dewsbury Central, one and a half minutes after leaving Wakefield.